there are many vaccination technologies we can talk about but here i will talk particularly about two of the most important ones why only two because these two cover almost 90% of the vaccine manufacturing first is using mrna this is a 30 year old technique after a few modifications some cutting and copying of the rna and with a sophisticated delivery system has become the talk of the town yes big companies like pfizer biotech and moderna are using it the only drawback uh, is that this vaccine must be stored at minus 70 degrees centigrade that's quite some freezing which makes it challenging for transportation to many corners of the world but anyways mrna is a type of rna which takes genetic information from dna about how and which protein to make and then it travels from inside of nucleus to cytoplasm for the protein synthesis but in the case of vaccination we inject this mrna in lnp but what is lnp lnp is lipid nanoparticle think of lnp as a tank and its job is to protect this mrna and take it successfully to the cell where this mrna works as a blueprint and ribosome being an architect uses this blueprint to make this special protein s yes i'm talking about spike protein the protein corona virus uses to enter our cells thank god this tank safely takes the mrna inside the cell no actually not 95% of this delivery vehicle is destroyed along with the passenger that is messenger rna research shows less than 2% reaches the cytosol where mrna is used in protein synthesis through ribosomes rna is a genetic material shouldn't we be afraid that it might fiddle with our dna conclusive research based on 30 years of experience shows it never touches our dna hence mrna cannot interfere with our genes this mrna only uses the machinery of our cell particularly ribosome to make spike protein the protein that corona virus uses to enter our body what happens after the spike protein has been made immune system gets this alert and starts activating t cells and b cells for this particular antigen protein this antigen protein is the spike protein b cells in turn make this antigen specific antibody t cells and antibodies together do a fantastic job t cells are like marines armed with special ammunition waiting to destroy the enemy whereas antibodies are like more they're more like a chemical that we throw at the enemy to make them inactive in the next video we are going to explain about how t cells and antibodies are part of this adaptive immune system and more about their workings now these t cells and antibodies roam around and wait for the real coronavirus but why do we get two shots isn't one good enough yes one is good enough with about 65% efficacy just imagine if everyone takes this out of 100 65 will not get sick and the other 35 will not face dire consequences like being in the icu losing 60 to 70% of the lung capacity or in worst case succumbing to death with 65% efficacy we will be able to recover at home fast recovery means we will not shed this virus that means we are not the carrier of this infectious virus therefore less spread less burden on the government so the resources our government has will be used to treat a few of the extreme cases but of course 92% is better than 65 that's what second dosage confirm a small trivia the vaccination we get against many of the flus are only 20 to 50% effective 
I also encourage all of you to read about herd immunity. It will be a big help. The second technology I'm going to talk about is adenovirus vectored medicine. Here adenovirus acts as a tank, but instead of taking mRNA, this tank carries DNA of the spike protein to the nucleus inside the cell. Why inside the nucleus? Because there is where DNA lives. Haha. <laughs> Now this particular DNA transcribes into mRNA. Transcribe is a fancy way of saying copied. So this particular DNA synthesizes into mRNA. Now this mRNA leaves the nucleus as all mRNA does and goes to ribosome for protein synthesis. Shouldn't we worry about this DNA being a genetic material fiddling with our DNA? Hmm, in theory, yes. but experiments tell otherwise thanks to technological advancements so what happens next oh it's simple it is exactly same as what happens with the mrna in the mrna technology this dna will write all of the important information to produce spike protein in this mrna This mRNA will now go to a ribosome. The ribosome will read this information from mRNA and make this a spike protein and this mRNA is destroyed ASAP. Can you please tell some of the drawbacks of adenovirus vector technology? Since this adenovirus is encapsulating the DNA of the spike protein and we know this DNA has to reach inside of the nucleus where it will be copied into a new mrna so in theory there is some chance that this spike protein dna might disrupt the gene regulation inside our cell and and i hope scientists have taken care of it but the real drawback is of the carrier adenovirus which is used as a tank to carry this spike protein dna to the cell Since adenovirus is such a common virus that many of us probably have immunity against it. And if not, then after the first dosage, there are high chances we will get the immunity. And that means this tank and the genetic material will be destroyed by our immune system before it even reaches the cell. Oh, one more thing. I want to point out that covishield in india is using chimpanzee adenovirus no we we won't become chimpanzees <laughs> johnson and johnson uses human adenovirus 26 russians are doing a better job at this since they are using carrier adenovirus adv 26 in the first dosage and adv 5 in the second one ah i keep on forgetting things I should tell you not to worry about this adenovirus too much since it cannot replicate lab work done. Let me tell you one good thing about adenovirus vectored technology. This vaccine is fairly stable at room temperature which you might not realize is how big of a thing is. But it is if you see. This vaccine needs to reach different corners of the world. I wish I could make you guys feel the gravity of this. As now you have mastered the knowledge about vaccinations, we should definitely proceed to understand about how our immune system helps us in fighting this infection in the third part of this series. Thank you guys.